If you've been following the news at all, you know that 2022 was basically a dumpster fire when it came to the economy. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what happened in 2022 in the real estate world. We're gonna talk about what is currently happening early 2023, and we're gonna talk about what potentially could happen in 2023 and even. Why? So you can make an informed decision on whether now is the right time for you to buy or sell and potentially make that move to the Tampa Bay area. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. And we also make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. So if that type of thing interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. Now let's get right into this. So in 2022, it was a very interesting year. You know, they, so much so that, you know, maybe the government or whoever decided that we were gonna change the definition of a recession took place. Now, I don't know if we are or we aren't in a recession at this point. I know personally, it feels like we are because nothing is happening. There are hiring freezes all over the place. People don't want to take risk that they were taking even 12 months ago. Why? Because they just are uncertain. And that's pretty normal, right? The one thing that my dad taught me when I was young, when we used to go in the woods, he, he used to hunt. Um, and he would take me hunting as a kid and he used to tell me all the time, he goes, Juan, whenever you get lost, the worst thing you can keep doing is walking. He goes, the best thing you can do is just stop. And I learned that lesson. And I think um, a lot of us, you know, kind of feel that way naturally. You know, when things become uncertain, we just stop, right? Because we don't know and, and there's a lot of fear in the unknown. And I can completely relate to that. So my goal in today's video is to help people really kind of understand, you know, what has happened, what is currently happening, like I said, and, and potentially what could happen in the 2023. So let's kind of get into this and what really changed because man, so many things changed. And depending on where you are in this country or in anywhere else in the world, because um, we have people who watch this internationally as well, things could be pretty different for you today versus when they were, you know, in January of 2022. You know, depending on what real estate market you're in, it may be, you know, going backwards entirely. You may have lost 5, 10, 20% in your values. I, I mean, we haven't seen really big numbers there, but I mean, there's places like Austin, Texas that are down 10%. Those are very large numbers. We're very fortunate here in the Tampa Bay area that housing values have held pretty stable. We're still going up and we're going to get into those numbers. I'm going to show you guys actual data here. but. There are some things we need to be aware of, right? There are a lot of leading indicators that tell us that things are changing. Um, and I mean, they're obvious uh, in some places and not so obvious in others. So today I really wanna kind of dig into that. But what happened in 2022 that got us to this point? Well, we actually have to take a step back basically to December of 2021 um, when the Federal Reserve started to, to make a change and start to raise interest rates because that's when interest rates really started to, to increase on the housing side as well. And while the Federal Reserve doesn't control mortgage interest rates, he does influence the entire economy. And these things, you know, they tend to run a little bit parallel. So interest rates started to rise. People in 2021, housing market was insane. It was on fire in, in, a, in a good way. Well, depending on whether you were selling or buying, uh, but it was, it was gangbusters, right? The best market anybody's ever seen in the history of real estate. Basically everything was going up every single day. Homeowners were receiving five, 10, 15, as many as 30, 30 offers on a property. It was crazy when we were selling these homes, we had to build spreadsheets to show our sellers how many offers they were getting. It was just absolutely crazy. And buyers were paying well over what the asking price is and, and, and basically breaking the bank to make that happen. And in December of 2021, as interest rates started to rise, things started to change. And depending on where you were in this country, they changed a lot. Now, here's the thing that we we, we want to take note of. From basically December of 21 to September of uh, 22, interest rates doubled. Mortgage rates 
doubled. And I don't know about you, but that affects a lot of people's purchasing power. And during that time period, obviously things are gonna start to slow down. So again, depending on where you are in the country or where you're watching from, things could be a lot different from you than they are here in Tampa. But I wanna kinda of talk about what is happening in Tampa because if you're watching this video, you are either a homeowner in the Tampa Bay area or you potentially considering making that jump. So I think that this is gonna be informative for you and I hope you get a lot of value out of it. I wanna jump into some numbers over here because I think they're pretty interesting. Now, I love this website, it's called Mortgage News Daily. It's a great site to just kind of pop in and check where things are. You know, if you're in a buying or selling cycle, you might look at a, at a, a report like this or a website like this, but they took the last 52 weeks of, of the year, and at the time of this recording, it's the first week of January, 2023, and the 52-week the range, I wanna share with you guys, the low, which was last December, was 3.29% on an interest rate, which historically speaking is bananas low. It's well beyond the average range of a mortgage, but that allowed people to buy bigger and bigger homes and keep their mortgage payments really, really low. Now, the high, which was right around uh, August, September, that rate was 7.37. I mean, that is a huge number. Again, doubling the mortgage payments. Now, all of a sudden, things started to slow down dramatically. And that's really where things got really interesting because people were sitting around going, okay, the market's about to crash and we didn't see that happen. And that's for a few different reasons. Um, number one, more people over the last three years have bought homes than, than ever before. Typically, there's about 10 to 12% of the country that moves every, every single year. Well, we were seeing as high as 20%. So what was happening is the people who maybe weren't considering moving before, all of a sudden were seeing their home values go through the roof and they're like, hey, I should probably cash out. I can scale up, get a home and keep my mortgage payment the same or get it less. So people who weren't necessarily gonna sell or buy before now are taking action and putting their homes on the market. And people who, who couldn't necessarily afford those homes in a, in a market where the interest rates were six or seven or eight percent, now all of a sudden were easily able to afford that home and they were making these purchases. So you had like this double whammy, but what happened in 2022 is all the people that bought in 2020, 2021, and beginning part of 2022, they didn't need to move anymore. So homes weren't coming to the market and everyone who was waiting for that crash to occur, well, in order for a crash to occur, you need a huge supply of inventory. You need more homes on the market than buyers available to purchase. And that just wasn't happening through 2022. So mortgage rates were going up, payments were going up, but inventory of new listed homes was going down. Now, this is really interesting because when you look at the market, you see inventory was up of available homes to sale, but what you got to remember is over the last two and a half years, that number was so far, it was crazy low. And I'll show you guys some stats over here because I think they're important and we'll get into them um, as, as we look at, uh, you know, the what's happening now numbers. But, I, you know, sharing those mortgage uh, info with you, I think is super important so you can kind of wrap your mind around what was happening. Um, you know, what was driving this, this, this slowdown, right? We got this tremendous increase in interest rates, which is putting downward pressure on the real estate market. That's pretty obvious, right? Now, what's happening now? You know, if you've been following Zillow or Realtor.com or whatever, you've seen all these price decreases, okay? And I wanted to kind of frame this because price decreases don't mean that the home is worth less. What it means is the buyer is not willing to give you what the seller is currently asking. Now, if the seller ends up having to sell for less than the comparable home sales, now values start to go down. So we've been in this weird spot where home values are holding steady. As a matter of fact, in Tampa, they're going up. And I'm gonna share these numbers with you. In August uh, was, uh, was the very first price decrease we had month over month, okay? And when I say price decrease, it wasn't worth less than the home was worth last year. It was just worth less than it was quote unquote in July, all right? And the market had been going up steadily, as you guys can see right here, you know, absolutely steadily from, from actually, if we go back all the way back to 2018 till um, August of 
or I'm sorry, July of 2022. But that's where we fall, saw that very first price decrease, meaning that homes were asking and selling less than they had been before. And then as you can see on this chart, the numbers start to creep back up here in the Tampa Bay area. Where you are, that number may be entirely different. It may be trending down. I know nationally prices are trending down. Now here's the unique thing. While we're up year over year in home value, Okay, at the, at the time of this recording, we're up 17%. So in 2022, the, the Tampa Bay real estate market still increased 17% year over year. Um, now, that's down from the 40% that it increased over the, the previous two, and, it, and it's trending down. So this is the thing that I wanna be uh, mindful of. But what is happening is these price decreases are real. Why? Because there are less buyers in the market. Uh, and, and there are still uh, you know, enough homes for them to purchase. So we're starting to see those months of inventory creep up. Well, why is that important? Well, more supply and less demand equals better pricing. We still haven't seen a quote unquote correction. And you know, when we start talking about predictions, I'm gonna get a little bit further into that. But right now, when the interest rates are 6.45% at the time of this recording, um, and inventory is beginning to creep up, these are things we need to be mindful of because this is the market we're currently in. And the thing that happens is I'll get a phone call and like they're like, hey Juan, what do you think is going to happen you know, in the real estate market. And, and here's what I wanna say, whoever decides to live by the crystal ball is destined to eat glass. That's what Ray Dalio said, and I agree with that. So what we're always looking at is what are the indicators that are telling us, how do we read the tea leaves so we can best position ourselves to, to make an informed decision? Because at the end of the day, owning a piece of real estate over time always wins. Now, if you have to, to buy in or uh, sell very quickly, that is where things tend to bite people. But for your primary residence, you know, there's never really a bad time to own real estate. There's a bad time to get a bad mortgage, right? If you buy a home that you can't afford uh, the payment on, now all of a sudden that becomes a problem because let's be honest, home prices go up, they go down, right? And if they go down, they're most likely gonna go up again. I can't guarantee that, but if you look at the history, which I'll put up here, home prices have gone up since they started tracking it. There have been dips during recessions, and 2008 is a great example. Um, that was caused by terrible lending practices and, and you know, unscrupulous activity at level 11. But you know, the long-term bet on real assets is they typically, right? And again, I'm not, I can't, I'm not your your financial advisor here but they grow over time. Anybody who's invested in real estate and held it for 20 or 30 years has never been disappointed with their return because they always have a return. So I wanna be mindful of that. But let's talk about you know, what's currently you know, happening right now. In the Tampa Bay area, the median sales price of a home is, is $410,000. That's $10,000 above the national average. We are still seeing an uptick in those property values, but what I'm seeing on the streets is we're finally starting to have appraisals fall short. So, you know, that's something to be mindful of. I just had my very first property in three years, new construction fall short of the appraised value. And that's pretty tough, right? These, you know, our buyers, you know, put, put together a great offer, you know, the builder accepted it and now those values are coming short. So we are starting to see some of these indicators that these things are changing, even though you don't see the sales stats out there, they're there. And I want to share this with you here so we can just kind of, you know, help maybe predict where things are going a little bit. I want to read the trends to you, right? So in the Tampa Bay market here, when we talk about where things are going, uh, since February of 2022, the, the sales volume, meaning the amount of, of properties that have sold every month has started to decline. And I'm gonna read these stats to you so you can start to see these trends. And I'm gonna put this up here as well so you guys can see it here. Um, but in February of 2022, you can see it was down 0.6%. So it just barely down when it was up every single month prior to that. And then March was down 7%, April was down 15%, May was down 7%. Now we're in the summer selling season. Sales aren't supposed to be going down there, right? They're supposed to be going up. You always have more sales during the summer. The 16.5% in June, 24% in July. Remember when I told you that that was the uh, the peak in pricing as well? You can see that in this chart up here too. Uh, that was the peak of, of uh, pricing and then it dropped off. And you can see why. In 
July, they were down 25% home sales were. August, it was down 19.6%. The amount of homes sold, remember that guys. And then in September, it was down 36.2%, 21%, and then 37% in November. Now, what does that all mean, Juan? There's been so many numbers thrown around today. You know, what is a person supposed to do? Well, here is, here's what I wanna share with you. Real estate as, a, as an asset class has proven itself over time. There's a difference between speculating, right, and ownership, okay? And if you plan on purchasing a piece of real estate and holding it over time, I really don't think there's ever a bad time to own real estate, right? There are windows when it's better than others, but timing those is nearly impossible. No one has been able to accurately predict that, right? Uh, but if, if, you know, you have to, to stretch beyond your means to get into a home, you are living in dangerous territory. So that's something just to be mindful of. And if you think you're gonna have to move in the next two to three years, I would definitely, I would definitely be cautious with that, right? If you think you're gonna come into Tampa and flip a house in two years with the current economic climate, you are speculating. That's not a, 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 the strongest play in the world. And again, I'm not your financial advisor, but I'm just looking at the trends. I'm looking at what's happening in our marketplace. Do I believe that our real estate market is going to hold up during this time period? Yes, as long as there's not some catastrophic event. We might even dip down on home values, but we'll be one of the softer ones according to the numbers right now, right? Miami's still up, Tampa's still up. They, why? We're a destination. People still want to move here and more and more people are able to work remote. And as long as that continues, we're still going to have those types of trends. Now, do I think we get out of this unscathed? Absolutely not. I think that we're all in this together. You know, I might even see my home values dip, but I've gained 45% over the last two and a half years. If I have to give some back, that's fair, right? Because what I what I believe in and my experience in real estate tells me is 10 years from now, my home will probably be worth 50 to 60% more than it is today. So I'm willing to take that risk. And if you've got any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. All of my contact information is listed down below. I'd be more than happy to share any of this information with you. We love meeting with potential clients, walking them through, because a lot of the times we're a get to destination, not a have to destination. People get to move here, they've worked their entire lives to do it, or they've decided that they're, they're, long, they're done with the gloom and doom of the gray and they wanna make that move so they make that jump. And if you wanna do that, my contact information, including a link to my calendar, is down there. You can schedule a time that works best for you. I'd be more than happy to jump on that call. We'll jump on a Zoom together and chop up all these numbers so we can build an actual plan that makes sense for you. Whether it's one week, one month, one year, or 10 years from now, we're here to serve. And until next time, go out and live that sample life.